Hello, so welcome. If you're listening on Spotify, hello, welcome. Thank you so much for, you know, supporting um, the podcast. Um, I obviously know that we're not being consistent with it, but I will try my best to do so. Now, if you're watching um, on YouTube, which is the video, it's really tight space. I'm using a 50 millimeter lens. I'm using the Canon 200D and it's in black and white, well, monochrome really. And I just want to try some because I really like um, black and white photography. Um, it shows a lot of detail and, uh, and so, and I think that, you know, doing a solo podcast, I, I just like the atmosphere of a black and white and what I can do with shadows. So if you're watching right now on the video version, you can see that, you know, um, that there's shadow coming down and, you know, hitting off my hair and it's, it's, it's making me look like, you know, I have a little fringe or something and it's parting. There's darker bits to my face than light. Um, so for audio listeners, I'd recommend, um, it's literally the All Right podcast. You will see it. it's a yellow background with cartoon animated people um, of myself and Nicola, Nicola and I. Um, for people that don't know who Nicola is, Nicola is my girlfriend. I'm with her five years and probably, what, eight months now. So it's about seven, eight months. So we're, we're reaching up to that six-year relationship. And I'm so excited. Um, Nicola has been someone that has supported me through, you know, doing all this. Um, filmmaking, script writing. Um, and anything that I kind of want to put my mind to, she's there and she supports, which is very good to have and a very comfortable thing to have um, with a partner um, that believes in you and trusts in you. So, you know, if Nicola, if you're listening to this, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. So I was listening to a podcast on the way over here because I didn't have a clue what I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about the film uh, Orphan Force Kill because I went to see it yesterday. I also want to talk about, um, I'm currently on leave right now for my job um, due to uh, so stuff, panic attacks, a uh, panic attack I keep having. Um, and I want to kind of get into that more because um, I know that it's very helpful for you know people that listen to podcasts. I notice with me when I listen to a podcast, it's because I don't want to be sitting there with my own thoughts. I want to have something on in the background that I would listen to their conversations. And I think it's just a really, you know, it's a good thing to um good thing to have if you're an anxious person. Listening to uh podcasts with I listen to comedians, so um I'd recommend listening to, you know, The King and the Sting, the Chrissy Chaos podcast, um Hey Babe. Um, taste buds where they just talk about food it's it's brilliant um, there's so much more but I'd recommend them and I think from any of them podcasts you will be linked up or you'll find you know they're all stand up comedians majority of them are um, so they all kind of in the same circle so you could get a lot from that now I'm looking at my recording here and I can see that I could be talking a bit higher um, but I just think this is a nice calm situation um, yeah, so as I was saying, before I came over here, I didn't know what I wanted to talk about. And then they start reading poems. And I was like, oh God, I remember the poems that I used to write. And kind of in a situation right now, I haven't looked back on these poems in years. Um, and they're on my Google Docs. I'd recommend literally anything you want to look for. Just save it to your Google Docs. You'll never, ever forget unless you delete your Gmail. Um, so I'm going to read one out now and I'm going to read them out through the podcast. Um, I'll put some nice little music in it. So here we go. Cue the music. Right. So here's the music and here's the mood and, you know, it's it's nice. So, yeah. So here we go. Silly little mess up. They see you in a perfect bubble. But in your own life, all you see is trouble. You hide your pain by drinking nonstop. When alone you're afraid because the truth may hurt a lot. Flirting, leading on and letting go is the only thing you can relate to because it was done to your own. Silly little mess up, so sweet, so afraid. The more you sink into your bad habits, the longer there you will stay. Silly little mess up, why so sad? Haven't you got what you wanted? No, I'm glad. 
Now, that wasn't about me. Um, I forget who that was about, but I found that when I was anxious or I was going through something, that I could write down my thoughts and the way I would do it is either a script or a poem. Um, and that poem came out. So there it is, that's the start off. Um, and we're gonna continue now into um, the orphan. I went to see Force Kill, Orphan the Force Kill. Now this is a spoiler, so if you don't wanna listen, just skip forward, I'll put a time here where you can skip forward to. So here it is right now. Okay, so you've been warned, so don't you know comment to me saying that, oh, you ruined the film for me, trust me, they ruined the film for us. I watched The Orphan, the fourth one. Um, I'll try to get it up now. I don't know when it came out. Um, I would look, look now. But I found it so fascinating. Um, in 2009 it came out. Um, it was two hours and three minutes. And I found it so fascinating. Because... I... It was completely unexpected when when we watched it. I watched it probably 2016, 2017 with Nicola. It was, I think it was one of the first films we watched with my brother and sister when I introduced Nicola to them. Um, and we kind of sat in the sit room and we closed the curtains and we put this on the TV and there were surround sound speakers. And I was like, right, a nice little, you know, it's a, it's a horror thriller. And by the end of it, I was like, oh, that's a really good storyline. That's a good twist, um, and I'm not sure if it's actually based on um, a true events. I think it is. Um, I'll check that now. So, I will read throughout this, you will see, and you will read. Um, but it's just coming up now for the or for the fourth one, so I'm not going to get into that that much. I, this, I didn't see any much of advertisement for the second one, and... When I went to see it yesterday, I went to the cinema, there was about 30 seats, I went to the very smallest one, screen 40 in Inview Cinema in Dublin, uh, in Liffey Valley, and it wasn't, like, I remember walking out of films, I walked out probably two films in my life, I love going to cinema, it's my happy place, I love going and watching cinema, I love going, um, it relaxes me, so from the day I had yesterday, I needed to get out of the house and I needed to go somewhere. So I said, I'm going to go to the cinema and it was at 25 past four. And I went in with high expectations and going, you know what, the first one was good. I, I really hope the second one was as well. And I think the only thing I liked from, from that actual film was the very start. And then the rest of it was dog shite. Now, excuse my language. But um, it was. It was not good whatsoever. Um, I wanted to walk out at one point when something happened. When I can talk about it now because I, you know, I said spoilers. So basically, uh, she, you know, she makes herself to look out to be this girl who um, went missing. And her, she, she comes back after escaping from the, the, the hospital, she she's in Russia. And her parents, who are supposed to be her parents, um, f the mother flies out, and she already kind of sees that, hold on, there's something different. Now, they haven't seen their daughter in four years, so they were told that there's a, there would be a lot of changes in development uh, about the child, you know, the mannerisms and the characteristics and blah, 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 blah. She also... The mother was like, hold on, she has an accent. And he goes, well, that could happen because, you know, at her age, from when she was missing to now, she could have developed that accent from from, from that. They got home. The da couldn't tell the difference. You can see on screen that the actress is aging. Now, I apologize um, if the actress ever says this, which I know you're looking. I know you're watching me. I know you're watching this podcast. Um... <laughs> And it was just ridiculous because at one point the mother cops on and finds out. But m because of the dad so happy that his little girl is back in his life, the, you know, the little 
the girl, um, she threatens the actual girl that's supposed to be the orphan to play along. And because it's like a, a posh, rich family. And the, and the actual plot twist was is that the, um, the girl didn't go missing. They have like this well on their estate that the older brother was mess fighting with her and he threw her down the stairs or something and she died. So the mother covered her up because they didn't want to lose the house, the money. She didn't want to lose her marriage. So she protected her uh, firstborn, which is kind of fucked up. Um, But I would not. I wanted to walk out of it. Just the acting wasn't good in it. Um, there was a lot of moments where I'm like, come on now, like, with the writing, are you for real? Is this what you decided to go with? Um, and write the storyline. I think it was a money grab saying, oh, this was done, this done really good, so why don't we just get a team of writers together and, you know, do this? And it was madness it was i wanted to walk out but i wanted to stay there and see right will this change my mind will something happen that will kind of save the film it just declined from there to there and i got to the point where the dad came home the house is on fire the the woman uh who is supposed to be called esther uh um and and so and the the woman the ma is hanging off the roof and the dad chooses to grab the child. It's supposed to be the child. It's supposed to be Esther. And then when the mother falls. And splats. Her brain splatters all over the pavement. Which is kind of. Ugh. I used to be able to watch stuff like that. But now I can't. I don't know why. I just can't. Um, I kind of close my eyes. I kind of put my hands over my eyes. But I used to be able to watch it. And. Um, it. It was just ridiculous. Because. The. Girl. That was supposed to be Esther, the orphan. She confessed her love to the to the dad, and the dad rejected her because the dad put his hands on her cheek, and then her fake teeth came out, and she had like real rotten teeth, and she was like, "Now we can be together. We don't need her." Like blah blah blah. She's not Italian, by the way. She's she's Russian, but I don't want to, you know, apologies. Um, and he rejects her, and she pushes him off. And he falls and splatters. And she's just left. And then at the very end of it, she's walking through a blazing house, all, all calm, calm. She walks into her bedroom. That's supposed to be her bedroom. And magically walks down the stairs while the whole house is on fire and walks out the door and then isn't caught at the end. How ridiculous is that film like it's so bad it was so bad it was terrible um and while sitting there at the cinema yesterday before the film started i um, i realized that i i kind of had doubt okay so we're moving on to something different now so i think before we move on to something different we're going to you know read another poem okay cue music Right, here we go, so the music's playing. It's called Bully. Hello, Bully, the person that was there for me the most. The person who only cared, the person that would never leave me alone. Hello, Bully, the person who would teach me a lesson or two. The only person who would talk to me at school. Hello, friend, the only person that understood my pain. Because at home, you felt the same. Do what you need to do. Do what you have to do. But not what you're told to do. Do what you want to do. Now, I wrote that because I start realizing, hey, um, this person is probably lashing out because you know they don't have a good upbringing, and so so, kind of looking back, we've all been, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have been bullied in school. I'm out of school ten years, and I still think about it, which is very bad, very very bad, um. I don't think about it as in like, oh, it affects me every day. But, you know, I, I think about it as in, you know, oh, why why did this happen? Why did that happen? I'm just moving the mic closer. Apologies for anybody that's kind of listening on audio. Um, and I decided to write that poem because I know that it wasn't their fault. They could have been going through some of the time family problems. Usually people do uh, that kind of go through that. 
and um, yeah, it's it's that. So that was a poem I wrote, um, and, and so, and it's hard to kind of divert into you know this from a poem to this from a poem, but I'm trying new stuff. Okay, I'm trying new things. Um, I'm trying. Okay, and that's all you need to do is try. So while I was sitting there in the cinema before the the film started, I. I was looking at the empty screen and I was looking at people around me and I was like, this is a small stunt cinema. And I start thinking to myself, because lately I've been worrying that, oh, am I doing enough for my kind of, you know, filmmaking career that I want to do? Am I making enough films? Am I doing enough? Am I putting in enough time? You know, this job that I have that's full time that I really enjoy is taking up a lot of my space of what I want to do. But I've been told, you know, and I, 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 I sat down with friends and they said to me, listen, you have to be realistic as well. You know, this can work. You can do this, but you have to, you know, you know, you need money, especially I'm 27 years of age. So you need money to uh, keep going um, and pay for bills and wanted to do stuff and, you know, rent and blah, 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 blah. If you have your own place. And I remember looking at the screen going, hold on. How many, how many films have I made so far? And I goes, right, so there's the interview. There's the lotto ticket. There is This Christmas. There's Widespread. There's The Hitmen. There is Strangers in the Night that we just, you know, finished. We're getting people into the studio now to do ADRs. And then Expiration Day, a uh, film I wrote, um, will be getting shot in will be filmed, not shot, will be filmed in November. Um, and that's seven films in four years. And for someone that, you know, learns as they went along, I think that's a great achievement. I really do. And I only saw it yesterday and I goes, you know what, I'm proud of myself. And I put up a quote yesterday actually as well. Um, I'm mad for the quotes, just letting you know. Mad for them. Um... But I'm going to get up on the story now of what I said. So I said, the interview, the lotto ticket, this Christmas, widespread, the hitman, strangers night and expiration day. And then I said, just because you're not famous doesn't mean you failed. You're doing great. Keep going. And I've been doing that a lot lately now. Um, I've been writing down stuff and kind of, you know, trying to prep myself up. Because I don't know what it is. I went, I was in work, um, I think it was Wednesday, what day is it today, it's Thursday, so it was Tuesday, I was in work Tuesday, and it was half eleven, and I came, I went into the office to kind of print off my photos, I, I take photography, and I started feeling real dizzy, and I had this pain in my chest, like a build up of, I couldn't breathe, for about three, four days, and I was constantly there, and I thought, Jesus, I think I have COVID, and I'd done tests, and I didn't, but then, I started, um, getting lightheaded, and faint, and my hand, my, my pinky finger, on the left, start going numb, and then, my whole hand, start going numb, like a numb, tingling feeling, and I went halfway up, my arm, on the left side, and I went, oh, I got this already. I got this before because it happened already when I was out the back and I was on to VHI Healthcare and I was talking about stuff and a hernia and so because I might have possible hernia. Um, and when they told me something, you know, that scared me, that frightened me, I remember my whole arm went numb and I thought I was taking a stroke. I thought I was taking a heart attack. And I remember lying down on Nicola's lap and she was literally just, you know, rubbing her hands through me here and literally telling me that it's okay, it's all right and I was having a panic attack and I didn't know what that was until the other day because when that feeling came back I went, oh, I'm having what I have before, it'll be over in two minutes. It lasted 20 to 30 minutes. It happened on the left side and then my right hand started going. So I had it on the right hand as well and I went right up there. So you're probably wondering what this is for the audio listeners. I have a lump on my wrist. I will get into that as well. You're probably thinking, hey, what's that? Uh, and so, um, 
so I went halfway up my, I went up halfway up my arm and I had it on both sides and I remember trying to get up and all I wanted to do while in work was to grab my bag and walk home and I, gra- I got up to grab my bag and I was seeing double and I felt very faint and at one point I think I fainted for like two or three seconds, five seconds maybe while my head was lying down and I woke back up and I, re- I asked what is that? And then I went over to the doctors yesterday on Wednesday um, to get um, a doctor's note for work. And I went over and started talking. And I got this build up on my chest because I was so anxious of going into the doctors. You know, there's people out there, you know, maybe yourself out there that's, that, you know, being in a hospital or being at doctors or dentists even, uh, kind of frightens you. It kind of gives you a bad vibe. It's people, it's where people go when they have problems with themselves, you know. Um, And out of nowhere, I started, the whole feeling that I had and I start kind of hyperventilating, it went and the doctor said to me, how are you doing? And I start crying. I started crying uncontrollably. You know when a kid is trying to talk to you, when they hurt themselves and like, I don't know, like like that. I start, that started happening to me. And I don't know why. It was it was horrible. It was it was horrible when it was happening, but once I got everything off my chest to my local GP, it went. The the crying stopped and I kind of felt much better. And it's from holding in stress and holding in things and it's it doesn't have to be from work, it could be from, you know, um just life in general stress and overthinking worrying having irrational fears which I've had a lot of um, I've, I've had a lot of them um, over the past few months and it <coughs> excuse me and over the last few months I think I just you know built it up all to this point um, but when I was in work it lasted 20-30 minutes that panic attack my breathing was fine nothing wrong with my breathing it was just a numbness and I looked it up and it said that your hands and your feet and your face can go numb. And then I started thinking, hey, I remember when I was in hospital and I was getting needles done, I was getting bloods done. My whole arm went numb. And my nose, all my nose went numb here. And I remember I was told by the doctor just to lie down and relax and there's nothing wrong. And they didn't tell me that it was a panic attack. But looking back on it, looking back on that, um, that, that seems to be what it is. I've, I've had, I've been having panic attacks without knowing it until you know, recent. So I know now that, you know, I will go through that. It, it, it could happen again, you know. I'm trying to get help now. I was referred to, you know, talking to people and counselling and, and blah, blah, blah. And I think it's very important to talk to, about stuff like this. I really do. Um, But I am now out of my job till Monday. And... I'm trying to give myself time to do things that I usually enjoy doing because I don't have enough time to do them with work. And this is one of them. I enjoy coming over there on a podcast. I can go home later and edit it. It'd be fun. And, you know, maybe write in Starbucks, get a hot chocolate and a croissant or a panini, ham and cheese panini and write. Um, that'd be fun. I'm watching Breaking Bad. Um, I have a photography give, gig this Saturday. That's paying very well, and I'm happy for that. Yeah, so it's 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 just there's a lot going on right now, but I'm learning now to cope with it, and you know, writing down my thoughts in Google Docs when I'm feeling anxious. I think it's um I think it's very important. Right, so I'm going to read out another poem right now. It's called A Long Day. A long day can be so exhausting. A long day can give you a frown. A long day can make you weak. A long day can put you down. A long day can seem like a week. A long day can seem like a year. A long day is only a day after all when realising that there is a next day to appear. So get through that day with the strength that you have and show how strong you are. Remember that day will not last and that long day will eventually pass. And I think that's relative to what I'm trying to say. 
just because you're going through something right now doesn't mean it's going to last. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, you will always change. There will always You will always adapt through life. And you need to understand that them long, hard days will eventually pass. And you will be in a better place, sometimes in a bad place. But you need to remember that there's constant change and you need to adapt to it. And you need to approach it in a way that you find helpful for you. So I want to write this as well. This was from a friend. Um, and we're, we're, we're friends now, but we weren't back then. And I wrote this, you know, a few years ago called Goodbye Old Friend. Goodbye Old Friend I grew up with. Goodbye old friend I'm, I, I'd spend my days with. Goodbye old friend who kept all my secrets. Goodbye old friend I know I don't see a future with. Goodbye old friend that stood up for me when no one else did. Goodbye old friend who would introduce me to the new kids. Goodbye old friend who was be my best friend. Goodbye old friend until we meet again. A friend is a friend for a certain amount of time. But a best friend is a best friend and I'm glad I could call you mine. Best friend. And that was another poem that I wrote. And now I think that I wanted to say this poem as well. Um, And so, because at the moment this is, I need to get to this place. It's called, I am happy now. I am happy now because I chose to walk away. I am happy now because I did not stay. I am happy now I can see. I am happy now that I can be me. I am happy now, I am not sad. I am happy now, the good days are no longer bad. I am happy now, I can be free. But more importantly, I am happy now that I can be me. And I hope I get to a stage where I can be like that and feel like that again. Because uh, at the moment I don't. But that's okay. I have more poems, but I don't want to, you know, I'll save them for another podcast. Let me know if you like the poems or so, I'll, you know, and I can write more and blah, 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 blah. So guys, um, before we go, because it's only a half an hour podcast, um, this thing on my wrist, just in case anybody's wondering, I have in, in ganglion cysts on my wrist that will be getting re removed. It's just a build up of fluid uh, in that can happen anywhere in the body. And um, people get them on the neck, you know, you can see Mr. Pimple Popper, Mrs. Pimple Popper and blah, blah, blah. Um, so don't be worrying about that. Right guys, so I do want to say thanks very much for watching if you got to this point. Um, we literally have a minute left on the podcast um, I will you know do this as much as I can um, if you want to go check out the podcast I done previously with Hannah please do uh, she is a woman's racer woman racer and um, that was very interesting to learn and I got into a car as well which was very fun and um, it was cool but guys thanks so much for watching um, I hope you like this atmosphere. I like I like this black and white. I think it's very interesting, very cool. And I might do this when I'm doing solo ones. It's it's very up close and personal, basically. Yeah, but guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, remember, it's not the best podcast. It's not the worst podcast. It's just the alright podcast. Thanks for watching and peace.